Good afternoon to all of you. It's a very interesting topic, and it's something like crystal gazing. And it's not everybody's cup of tea to crystal gaze, but I am a follower of astrology, and I mystique always uh, attracts me, and I go deep to study those uh, subjects. So I'll try to do justice to today's topic. In order to shape the future, the first and foremost important thing I believe is to accept the change. 5,000 years ago, 1,000 years ago, 500 years ago, or 100 years ago, or even 20 years ago, every life has had its own technologies and it has changed. What was there 20 years before and what is there now, it's not there or things have changed completely. And in this information age, what's happening is that the time gap of introduction of new technology is actually reduced and the new technologies are coming very frequently. What's important for us is to adapt to these change very quickly. When I passed out my MBA degree and I took my first assignment in one of the top automotive companies in India, my first job was to replace a person who has done 32 years of meticulous service of keeping the management information system. This guy, everybody was to, used to look up to him to, for the information, whether it's a top management or a middle management. He used to do sales planning, getting requirements from across the country for more than 500 auto components, and plan in different OEMs, replacement market, STUs, and so many other markets, at the same time coordinate with the plant. And anybody who used to ask him the information, he would provide that in few minutes, two minutes, or three minutes, because he was an expert in bin system. And now I was told to replace him in six months. And I, and I looked at him, oh, such a great person. And what I had to do, I was a young graduate, just learned computers, knew what is MS Office, and probably I was slightly better than other contemporaries in Microsoft Excel. And the moment I took this assignment, I started looking at what things can be fed in where. And you know, once he retired, the entire day's work that he used to do, I used to finish that in the first 30 minutes of the day. And all the MIS, which was needed, and whatever information, whosoever were required, was there on the table before they come to the office, or maybe within a few minutes of they come to the office. Today, there are new technologies coming up, like artificial intelligence, where probably, you know, whatever we are thinking, human being is thinking, all of that can be rationalized in a very scientific and idealistic way, that you don't need to work that hard to get the information. The key is how do we adapt to this change? And how do we prepare ourselves to take these technologies? Instead of being scared, we should be capitalizing on these opportunities and create our own niche and create our own markets. When we have something to dream to, the first thing that comes to the mind is innovation. If you are innovative, you will find ways to create your own product and services and be successful in that. The company that I work for right now is a leader and very innovative company in very niche products. The company marketed in the world for the first time the snowmobiles. It was innovated and then they spread it out in that area. So the first set of innovation that you can do is that you introduce products which are not available in any part of the world, and you create it, you market it, and then that becomes like a great innovation. The second level of innovation is when you actually try to see that what are the other areas where these products and services are not available, say in India. 
the industry was at a nascent stage when I took this assignment seven years back. And to introduce these products in India, because India is all surrounded by off-roads, had snow locations, and to introduce the all-terrain vehicle and a snow scooter in India was like an innovation. In one of my previous assignments, I was working for an IT hardware company and I went to China. And while I was looking for the products which were related to IT, but I also saw that in the marketplace there were a lot of mobile phones which were very unique, fantastic phones. And I asked them, and then they, at that point of time in India, there was a company which was a leader having a market share of about 75%. And almost everybody used to have that phone in their hand. And when I saw there, the market share of that company was very low. And I asked why. And I realized that there are new products that have come in with better technologies and a much cheaper price. And that is why the market in China that I saw was like a different uh, situation altogether where this brand had very low market share and other brands have captured. And then I saw that this is going to come to India. So that's also innovation. That you go to any part of the world, the product and service are doing very well. In your marketplace, it's not so. Then you can introduce those products in the country. It's like an innovation for that area. And then I came back and introduced the mobile phones of that company. And today that company is one of the leading uh, mobile handset company. There is a third set of innovation that you can do. Actually, sometimes you have to think what's going to happen next by figuring out what are the product and services required. And at times, it's important that you go back, flash back into the history, go back to your past, and learn from there that what was existent at that time and what do we have right now? Can we do some merging of the ideas, ancient wisdom, and the modern technology? I would like to share that you know, today's aircraft are such great that you go any part of the world in the shortest of the time. But we have also have a problem today that the fossil fuel is reducing. And we say there will be an imbalance happening. And at some point of time in the future, we will not have the fossil fuel to supply the demand that is growing. What do we do at that point of time? Now, if you go to the ancient history and you read these scriptures, you would find a lot of uh, aircrafts by the name of Vimana, Pushpak Viman, Shakun Viman, and there are so many Vimans mentioned over there, and in fact there are some Vimana Shastra written over uh, in the past, where you have the details of not only that there was a Viman existed, but there were uh, aircraft which can carry up to 500 or more people, and there were seven, uh, seven layers of seating which was done in those aircrafts. They had specifically designed that what was the fuel used over there, what were the engine compartment, and from there you can see and you can learn that they used to have the solar energy, using solar energy for powering that uh, aircraft, and a combination of some air into it. And that technology, they, that fuel they used to create to run the aircraft. Now, if we today do the R&D and innovation to get that in today's aircraft. Maybe it is possible, maybe it's very difficult, but maybe we can learn something out of it and do something and which will, which will eliminate the shortage that the fossil fuel is going to see in the future. There are such ideas which can be great to change the humanity and that is where the success lies. And it all starts with your thought, your thinking. What are you thinking? In what lines are you thinking? And if your thoughts are aligned to a dream that you have, and the words that you speak are right, and the action plan that you have, all three are in sync, that is where you can really define what's going to happen next. So we always plan the future, and that happens through the thoughts that we create in our head. And when we align that with the whatever we are speaking and you have the idea shared with others, you actually make your future becoming secured and whatever dreams that you have gets realized. To give you an example, when I was a student, one of uh, my best friend who is ultimately became my wife, so I, I said that I want to uh, achieve such and such goals in my life I want to become X in the corporate world and in this time frame. And she helped me define that. 
that refine those thought processes to what you want to do. You want to achieve, you want to become a sales and marketing head, you want to become a CEO. Can you actually dream to define that in what sort of a company? Because if you start your website today and you can become a CEO of that company. But if you define that, so she helped me define that and that's how the thoughts, the words that I committed to myself and others and the action that I did subsequent to that, those goals achievement, helped me define the future that I really wanted. Once we have these in place, the other thing uh, which are very, very critical and very basic, you all must have heard about this, but I like to share with you that uh, how I did implement th these big uh, words that we hear all the time. So what's very important is that we should have a strong willpower. We should have a right attitude and we should have belief system which are very strong. But how do we say that, you know, willpower is very important, but how do we create the willpower? How do we develop the willpower? I learned it based on my experiences. I, this, this, I learned that there are five senses that we all have. And if you start controlling those senses, it will help you build a stronger willpower. For example, I am a very foodie person. The food that I love is all high calorie items. The chole patore, samosas, the gulab jamuns. And the moment it comes in front of me, I can't resist myself. But how do I develop my willpower? What I do, I keep fast. I keep fast on Ikadashis, the 11th lunar day of the month. I sometimes keep fast on Thursdays, Saturdays. And what it helps me is that the food that I really love is lying in front of me and I don't have it. Now what happens is that when I do something like this, I'm controlling my senses, one of the senses, and similarly I can control other senses as well. And when I do that, the best thing that I love in front of me and I don't have it, it builds the willpower that I can control my emotions. I can do what I really am interested in at this point of time. So if I create a future which requires me to do X, Y, Z, such a small discipline in my life would help me create that big thing in also uh, in my life. So these are things that I implemented. Now attitude is something which we always talk about. Now attitude is like we, we are presented into certain situations. How do you react to it? Sometimes saying yes is seen as being positive and being having a right attitude. But at times, you should be learn the art of saying no. Because that also defines the attitude. Because if you're focused on your goal, what you want to achieve, there are plenty of things that will distract you. But when it distracts you, what do you say at that point of time, whether yes or no? The art of saying yes or no will define how well you can achieve your dreams. And ultimately, the belief, the self-belief that you have is very, very important. The belief in self, I am Brahmasmi. I am the infinite. I am the capable person and I can do whatever I define and dream of. That is the philosophy that we should have. If we respect myself, that is where I will build upon that to really grow in life. So believing in yourself and then believing in the circumstances that you are in what you are doing right now with others, what are you doing right now with the plans that you have made, makes a person achieve their goals. And last but not the least is, the, the, when you are doing such big plans, you will always be facing criticism. And when you believe in your dreams, whatever you are planning to achieve, you have to be fearless. You have to overcome the fear of failure. And you should not let others define your limitations. And most of the time it happens. Like in my life, when somebody came and said, Pankaj, you cannot do this, you can't achieve this, or you have to do in a certain uh, manner, you can't go in this direction. But whenever I have listened to those thoughts, I have always focused on my goals, that this is what I want to do, and it doesn't affect me in any manner. If we go through our own history and scriptures, you would get to know that even goddess and god have been criticized. And I have a couple of lines to share with you here from a film song. You will like it, which summarizes that how you have to handle the criticism. 
कुछ भी जगत की ऐसी है हर एक सुबह की शाम तू कौन है तेरा नाम है क्या सीता भी बदनाम फिर क्यों संसार की बातों से भीग गए तेरे नैना कुछ तो लोग कहेंगे लोगों का काम है कहना सो पीपल विल कम whatever plans that you share they will criticize you but what's most important is that you learn out of that criticism whether the criticism is right or the criticism is wrong and if the criticism is right please make your dream plan stronger let them drill holes so that you make your plans stronger and be successful in whatever you plan in the future on the other side if the criticism that you are getting is not correct or wrong then you have to ignore it at times when people criticize you you have to think of the person who criticizes you as a person who is making you successful or the person is like a dhobi who criticizes the god and therefore you have to categorize the person who are criticizing you and always improve based on the feedback that you receive and that's all i have to say for shaping the future thank you